Today I got a camcorder. This was uh, one of the ones that I had given to me as a gift. It doesn't work. So we're going to um, see if they can get this one working. I don't have a power supply for it, so i got to dig up one from my own. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this one up and running. And my bet is I will. But you'll have to wait and find out and see how well it works. Check this one out. Today on this episode of Tech Talk, I have a little Sony CCD TR54. This camcorder was uh, given to me and uh, a donation to my channel to see whether I can fix it. If I can fix it, I'm going to turn around and sell it because I don't have much use for a, a camcorder like this. But first, let's see whether the unit itself can be saved. This is a Monoro camcorder. So it just has your standard audio video outputs. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up and see if I get a picture from the camera on my screen. And at this point, there's no light. Oh, it might help if I snap the battery pack on properly. Hey, I believe this one has a picture. The camera section's working. You can hear, you can hear the audio. Turn the sound down here. So I don't get feedback, but I have a picture from the camera. So this part is working. The zoom lens is working. Let's see if it will play a tape. We'll take a look down into the tape transport first of all and see if anything looks like it's missing. This is a B mechanism chassis on this one. We'll load the tape and just see whether it uh, does anything. So this one obviously has an alignment problem. There's a good chance that that's all that's wrong with this one too. Uh, these cameras were actually quite easy to open up. I actually like the design of this camera. This camera actually has value, especially since I think I'm going to be able to get this one working. This would be a good one to sell because this camcorder doesn't have those nasty capacitors that the older ones did. This is a late model. And oh, to open up the front compartment, there's just a couple of little clips under here that I'm just flipping them out of the way. And I just broke one. I have a problem with plastic as it gets brittle. There's little catches down here that open up that you pop the door off. One of them just broke. But uh, here's the mechanism on it. This is a B mechanism camcorder. I'm going to pop the side off of this one to work on it. Take the battery off of it. And. Uh, We'll open it up, remove the arrow mark screws. This one here could be actually a very easy fix. I'm hopeful it's going to be an easy fix. It should be just one of the uh, one or two of the uh, guides have come undone or have shifted, which sometimes happens, is they will shift, and it just has to be realigned. That's what I'm hoping is all that's wrong with this one. This one didn't have the guide posts that fall out like some of the A mechanism chassis did. And uh, these ones were actually a fairly good design. I actually scrapped one of these units to fix my digital eight camcorder because one of the problems that happens on these ones is this, uh, this ribbon gets damaged here from slamming the door. And sometimes there's a, a burr on the bottom of the catch here on some of the earlier ones. The, the, the chassis, they fixed this on the later ones, but the earlier ones, it would actually cut 
it would cut a line and sever this flexible cable which rendered the rotation sensor inoperable and then the unit was shut down after five seconds and that happened on my DCR TRV 110. So I actually took a perfectly good working camcorder and stripped the guts out of it, stripped the chassis out of it to fix my digital 8 camcorder. And uh, this would be a good candidate to hang on to just because it's got pretty much all the same parts in it as my digital 8. But saying that, if somebody wants this camcorder, once it's fixed, it will be one that I make available for sale. And my confidence level at this point is pretty good that I'm going to get this thing working and making it so that it'll record and play. Because from seeing the symptom, it looks like it's just an alignment problem. Now the, t the side on this one, I remove all the, the required screws, which are these ones that are marked with an arrow. Once I've got the required screws out, the side should pop off and allow me to work on it unimpeded just like that these are beautiful cameras to work on they were one of my favorites because they were so easy to do I'm, I don't even need to use a scope probably on this I'm more than likely going to be able to get the alignment correct just using a monitor but I will use the scope just to show you guys how good I really am So let's try playing the tape and uh, we'll find a small screwdriver that I can adjust the tape guide here and we're going to just try moving the tape guide down ever so slightly. I'll show you guys the screen as I'm doing this so that you can see what progress I'm making. So I'm just adjusting the entry side guide right now. I'm just turning it slightly clockwise. And the picture is almost perfect at this point. Okay, I think the, that that side is okay. I'm going to move to the other guide. I'm going to try moving the guide on the left side. We had to move it about a quarter of a turn to the uh, the exit guide. So I adjusted this one here. This one was off by about three quarters of a rotation. It was counterclockwise, like about there. And I just adjusted that one to bring the picture in good. And then I this one here was off by about a, about a quarter of a turn. It was like that. And I just brought it back. And the picture is now looking to be fairly good. I'm sure I can probably get it a bit better. And if I really wanted to uh, go to town, I could plug a scope into this thing. Uh, test points are right down on the board here. I could look at the RF on it if I really if I really wanted to make sure that I was exactly correct. So that's what we'll do. The RF is the bottom pin down here and looking on my scope it's actually looking excellent. I'll show it to you guys. It's that pin down there. <clears throat> There's also video and chroma and stuff that's available here and the switching point. I'm not even going to bother with the switching point. I'm just going to show you guys quickly what the RF looks like. There's my RF. Looking pretty darn good. If I move, if I slips, ah, I touched the head there. Let me start that up again. Now, if I uh, just move one of those guides, while well, I've got the probe on here, you'll see that it does change the RF from here. This is tedious because I'm trying to hold the thing, but you see, there's there's the entry guide down, and there's the entry guide back up. I eyeballed that without putting the scope on it. Just looking at my TV screen. That just goes to show you that if I can eyeball this just looking at a, a monitor, then any idiot can do it because it's not that difficult. If you if you look at the screen, you know what you're looking at. The the entrance side, the 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 side on the supply side, okay, we'll call that the entrance side, the side on the supply side, because it depends on what way you're looking at the mechanism. In this case, I'm looking at it on the on the upside down basically right a VCR would normally look like that with your tape spooling in going into the entrance side 
entrance side guide, exit side guide. The video head rotates counterclockwise. For an analog recording, the top of the picture starts right here, where the tape makes contact with the head. The end of the picture, or the bottom of the picture, is over here, where the tape is exiting. Now, in the case of eight millimeter, in the case of VHS, your exit guide would be 180 degrees away from the entrance side. <clears throat> so, if we were to it's going to stop this thing from spinning. If we were to draw a line across here, right across the middle, the exit would normally be over here, right? Because you've got 180 degrees. If we were to look at where the tape makes contact and cross the drum right at the center, that would be where the picture ends. Eight millimeter go an extra 30 degrees because that is where they would record the optional PCM digital stereo soundtrack in the point from where the, the end of the picture is until the end of the track. But it doesn't matter, it's the same, VHS is the same. You've got the top side of your picture on the side of the guide, on the guide that is on the entrance to the drum, the start of the frame, which is here, and the bottom of your picture is on the other side. So if you know that, you can look at the screen and adjust it accordingly and you'll see the lines near the top of the screen here when you adjust one side and you'll see the lines near the bottom of the screen when you adjust the other side. It's really that simple to set it up. Now as I say, you know, these cameras don't typically have the same capacitor issues as older ones. They still use the surface mounted electrolytic caps like here, but this was a little newer era and the problem that the caps had had mostly been solved by the time this camera was manufactured. The troubled caps were typically in the earlier transports, even some of the, the A mechanism cameras, although not to the same degree as some of the older ones. But these ones here, there wasn't a lot of capacitor failures on this particular model of camcorder. I guess the next thing we can do on this is we can test this out and see how it records. I, I know the recording is going to be fine, so we'll just do a quick test recording on it. And I'm going to put this one back together. And if you're curious, yes, the electronic viewfinder, the little black and white CRT in there is working on this unit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the microphone in so I can test the sound recording on it as well. So we're going to put the little flex cable back in. I'll plug the monitor in as well. And uh, we'll do a little recording on this point past where the recordings were done on the uh, on the tape. <clears throat> this one uses pin switches on the side here. These some, these pin switches here sometimes do uh, get uh, dirty. One turns on the power for standby and the other one is for recording. So I press this one down, I get a picture on my monitor and if I turn up the sound, we will hear feedback. So to record, I can just tap this one and that'll start the recording. That's the start stop button. And I'll just kind of wave at the camera and say, hello, testing one, two, testing one, two, give you guys the bird, some of you anyway, right? Um, you guys know who you are too. Uh, we'll stop the recording here, press the stop button, and if I, of course, release the standby switch, the camera will go shut off. We'll switch it over to VTR mode, and I'll rewind the tape, and we'll play it back. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Give you guys the bird. Uh, some of you anyway, right? Um, you guys know who you are too. I uh, will stop the recording here, press the stop. So that pretty much does it for this one. This one's fixed. It's working. It's uh, in pr actually fairly good shape. I'm going to uh, put the cover back on it now and we'll, we'll close this one off. As I say, this camera I'm going to sell. I, 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 I should be selling this one because I, you know, I've, got, I've got enough camcorders here basically to, to uh, last me as long as I'll ever need camcorders. I just use them for playing back people's tapes and I've got, uh, you know, I've got an EVS 7000, I've got an EVS 5000, I've got uh, two DCR 
uh, TRV 730s, I've got a DCR TRV 110, I've got a GVD 800, so I, I think I'm set as far as 8mm uh, equipment for recovery of, of tapes for as long as I'm going to be still doing the recovery of tapes and transferring tapes. So I don't think I need to hang on to yet another working camcorder. So this one here I'm going to sell. The only problem is I don't have a power supply for it. So whoever wants this camcorder is going to have to already have a power supply. You know, if you've got another Sony uh, camera that used this type of, you know, like an MP6 battery, then uh, you're good to go. But uh, for someone who doesn't have a power supply, it's not going to do them much good. Well, I guess you could power it up with 6 volts positive and negative from a from a power supply that's not really a, an issue lots of six volt uh, switching power supplies available that are dirt cheap that would certainly power the camera up no problem but uh, obviously if someone's already got a power supply and they've got a dead camera that is suffering from the capacitor plague they would be the preferred buyer of something like this And I think there's one more screw down here. See, so these cameras go together really nice. It's too bad that that tab on the the front on the tape door broke. It'll still attach, it just won't attach as well as it as it should have. It'll still clip in place. It just clips on. There's a couple little catches on the top. That just clip on like that and then it just snaps into place and it still it will still uh, hold the cover in place no problem as you'll see right this side here is not as tight as it should be but it'll still open and close that's it for this one as always thanks for watching be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, we will catch you in the next one coming up real soon. Bye for now.